So we'll start with the introduction, a basic introduction. We won't spend a much hours on this because since you already uh, know how Google sort works and everything, we'll give you the system administrator overview that what acts behind the servers, how does the request flow goes on from uh, a browser to uh, the server to application server to database and how the data is being fetched from the admin perspective, mm -hmm. okay? And the second okay. part is that uh, from where can you download if something is not working right and some version mismatch is there, how to find out that, uh, you know, so second will, uh, okay, followed by this, uh, will cover the topic of how to find the binaries, okay? And uh, how to sorry, get how the to, mis mismatch. Sorry. Mm -hmm. How to find the binaries, you said? Yes, on Oracle support, there, see, people sort of works with a lot of, not only because of the application or because of tools is required, there's a database client is there, web server components are there, application server components are there, Java is there. So how to find the correct version uh, respective to your people soft? That is the part we'll be discussing and the rest will be covering a topic one by one that, uh, you know, application server domain. Then uh, this is an interview topic basically, but we'll cover this single sign-on process. It, has practical, practically it has no day-to-day -day, uh, activity use, but uh, yeah, it has an interview topic. These are the main topics in your case, that is creating yeah, so, and... Uh, I would like to know about single sign-on also. Um, yeah, we'll cover that, we'll cover that. Okay. Okay. We'll cover this. Yeah. The, the topics which are mentioned over here, we'll be covering right. all the topics. Okay. Now okay. I'll add one more thing, firm. I'm adding mm, one more yeah. thing. That's okay. Microsoft Update Manager. You must have heard about Pub. Have yeah, you? I know. Uh, right now, actually, we are 9.1 uh, application mm -hmm. uh, version mm -hmm. um, and 8.56.23 uh, mm -hmm. is the tools version. So, but okay. we are, I think, uh, for people tools upgrade, uh, we have we have never used Pub, but I think going forward, mm -hmm. actually, it would be only Pub to upgrade or Pum, do anything. Yes. Pum is actually works in 9.2. If you want to apply yeah. some package, if you want to have something added to your mm -hmm. environment, the extra yeah. functionality. So you mm -hmm. should have, you need to have a environment 9.2. Environment as an application 9.2, okay? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this, is, this is there. And then followed with by this, we'll be covering the, there's one part that the how to configure and create application server domain. And the second part is the admin administrating the application server domain. And here we'll be covering the troubleshooting part also, respective to this, uh, what do you say, uh, application server, okay? Sure. So mm -hmm. troubleshooting also is of different type. The one is thing, one thing is that someone comes to you with some error, mm -hmm. <clears throat> then you, you need to find out that which is the broken component. The broken right. component could be, you know, they, they come up with the error and you do not know that what is the, uh, you see, you search for it and you see the logs and then you find it, okay, the issue is not with my application server, the issue is with my web server, the issue is not with my web server, the issue is with something else. And the second mm -hmm. stage is that to troubleshoot within that component. So this troubleshooting and tra tracing and debugging is for all overall PIA, that is overall people's software environment. And mm -hmm. this particular, if I talk about the application server, then there will be how to admin it, how to tu tune it, and how to do troubleshooting with respect to application server domain only. Okay, that is okay. one part. Mm -hmm. Second is PIA web server. Okay, mm -hmm. so this is installing and conf configuring, same as application, mm -hmm. yes. How to admin it or the troubleshooting inside mm -hmm. web server. Sorry. Troubleshooting with respect to web server only. And same will go for batch server. So batch server or process scheduler. Okay. You can call this as process scheduler also. Okay. okay. And then the the yeah. things that report no. And also, uh, I would like to um, have some overview of um, load balancer setup uh, and uh, issues related okay. to that, and troubleshooting those issues. Uh, right, currently, I'm having one. See. But, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> See, so there are two things. 
Suppose this is your PeopleSoft environment. Okay. Mm -hmm. So these are the servers inside PeopleSoft environment. These are right. the servers. Right, right. Web server, app server. Suppose these mm -hmm. are the two web servers. Okay. And let's change mm -hmm. the shape. And these are your app servers. Okay. Yeah. And this is your database. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this is your PS environment. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this is your organization. Okay? Right. Now there are two things. These are PS, in, your PS environment is, a, is uh, what do you mean the PS environment? Uh, the... I, PS environment means that the servers at the, each box represents a server, and each server mm -hmm. is related to PS, PS only. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay, so this box, this outer box, which you, you see, this box is a PeopleSoft application. Okay, and the right. one PeopleSoft application has its database, has its application server, has its web server. Now, there are two, right. th two things you know, the load, load balancing one is that external load balance, uh, load balancer is there. Suppose okay. you're using F5. So mm -hmm. some user sitting in your in your company reaches out to this and now uh, speaking about the application it is not uh, necessary that one company is running only people so it may have mm -hmm. various applications also okay now this is a user sitting over here right it is hitting the url of this application that people saw right so it, sh it should be going through f5 now what f5 does f5 is an external load balancer what it does it checks there, there are settings inside the F5. Okay, so uh, there, are, there are rules basically written that it should go. The request should go if you, if uh, the user is hitting this particular URL. The request should go to this server at some port and to this server at some port. The ports are defined. That totally depends on the system admin provides the ports to the F5 team and they configure it in their load balancer. So this is something. Uh, load balancing on the web server part because web server receives the first request okay yeah. so this f5 is external thing there is a separate team for this and they they do the configuration and everything but the second thing is that now when the request enters this web server now where should it go should it go to this should it go to this should it go to this from this should it go to this from this that is mm -hmm. something load balancing of application server domain that we do right, right. as an admin yeah. We, yeah. we do it but this part this part that a user sitting in an organization hitting a url of people so now mm -hmm. this configuration on this load balancing load right. balancing that is external load balance that we have to provide our server and port number to the f5 team so mm -hmm. i can explain you the overview how it works right but yeah, the whole I don't want. I don't want to learn uh, mm -hmm. learn the setup of external load balance at all. Um, yes. Just having some issues this with will... uh, uh, mm -hmm. like session stickiness mm -hmm. and stuff. Actually, people are uh, complaining about um, uh, when they're logged in. Actually, images are not loading properly, and then they're all of a sudden uh, getting back to the sign on sign on page and stuff. So it seems actually that session switching, yeah, that's that, that's what I just wanted to have over you the issues uh, related to stickiness. How many, stuff. how many web servers and application servers are running for you people? Uh, three web servers and three application servers. Okay, and so each web server mm -hmm. is connected to a particular. Uh, application server or it is being uh, load balanced to all load three. Balanced, actually yeah we load balanced first uh, app, web one if it is uh, sending a request actually it will be set up in a way that like it will be sending first to app one and then and in a sequence actually if it is not available then app two then and app three so app three two. of them set up that way actually web two will be connecting to connecting first to app two mm -hmm. and if it is not available to go to the other ones so uh, that, okay. that's the way it is set up and uh, are, they, are these users facing uh, this issue at any specific time 
or they facing this no, only yeah i am working on the uh, production and i i hardly face this issue but the images with i face the issues with the images in one of the browser like uh, edge what money uh, that's edge browser uh, uh, but users are complaining and showing i'm sure seeing their screenshots actually when it is happening in uh, chrome they use chrome i think chrome browser also so in so chrome browser when... it was fine, fine for me <clears throat> So when when this is happening, uh, do you ask them to clear the cache or try in on another browser or try in in Cogito? And... Right, I ask them clear clear cache and uh, then for some time it will work fine and then they will be complaining again. It is slow. It is uh, kick me out and it is uh, taking me to this, uh, um, sign on page and. Uh, uh the page is not loading uh loading fine uh, images images are not loading actually basically when they said like page is not fully loading and stuff so mm -hmm. um, that those kind of actually i was going through uh, i was going through mm -hmm. the work documents and i thought it might be related to the session stickiness so web server session mm -hmm. is not being sticky or uh, the the cookies or something related to the cookies and stuff so, so that's what actually um yeah okay. uh, we can discuss that uh, later actually yeah that's that's what one thing actually we wanted to discuss um uh, what you can do is uh, you can check the uh, you can meanwhile what you can do is check the configurations mm -hmm. uh, on these web servers there are two files that config.xml and web.xml and there should be a session ID, session ID over there. You check mm -hmm. the session ID, session ID is over there. Are mm -hmm. they same or what, what is happening? There you might, you might find, I mean, I do. Yeah, that's, uh, no. I don't have any environment running right now on my laptop, I would have shown you. Okay, we can discuss this. Okay, yeah. You can discuss this. So this does uh, not seem to be. So it is on premises or it is running on cloud. If Microsoft is running on cloud or because this kind of issue are faced in AWS setup and that was also not with uh, related to web server. That was actually related to the one of the security group. Not. You know we can discuss this while we come to the part of web server troubleshooting. Then we can okay. see this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. You can start with these topics and mm -hmm. further if you need to if you feel a need that you need to include some topic. As far as, we uh, can... as far as the installing the environments and uh, are we covering with the COBOLs and COBOL installations and stuff, right? Compiling See, COBOL, uh, you know, for COBOL compilation you need a uh, that uh, you need a license. So mm -hmm. I can tell you a workaround. Uh, mm -hmm. That is also on Windows actually. So there is a uh, micro focus. We can install micro focus and do a COBOL compilation, but that is for short period only. Okay. okay. Yeah, just so while... to, uh, see, I don't have day to day issues with COBOL, but uh, in cases actually, if there is an issue with the see, COBOL. Whenever, uh... What happens, you know, COBOL compilation, uh, suppose if you're running HRMS and you're applying a tax, you are in US, right? Yeah, I'm in US, yeah. Okay, so I, you know very frequently they release a tax update. So, okay, so while applying the tax update, the mm -hmm. new coupons are being included every time you apply tax updates to your environment. So then we are required to do a COBOL compilation. Right, okay. right. But uh, the people of uh, financial applications actually, uh, we use COBOLs, uh, uh, the same COBOL. Uh, I never uh, see. Um, once they are installed, mm -hmm. I never see they, they are being compiled again. But I never see they had an issue, but I don't know uh, the, how, the maintenance part of those co -co ball. Like mm -hmm. well, well, uh, well, you're using mm -hmm. uh, because you have, you have 9.1, right? In mm -hmm. finance yeah. also. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're not on 9.2 on finance. I'm not on 9.2, mm -hmm. but um, yeah. Maybe I think in future we'll be going to 9.2. Uh, 
so in linux the dependency is lesser on cobol processes but we'll discuss that cobol also all right mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. yeah. First, we'll compare uh, because see to understand a COBOL, we'll have a limited type of I think seven days or something. So we'll mm -hmm. do it in the very last. Very okay. Good. Yeah. Very so that okay. we do an installation and uh, within the trial period we complete our things. You know. Okay. Sure. Yeah, but uh, I think for that uh, we'll have to work on Windows actually. Mm -hmm. We'll create a okay. Windows environment and there I'll show you. Okay, sure. How to how to do the uh, this compilation and everything? Okay. Okay. Uh, Cobol's uh, can be installed in uh, uh, Unix environment. Linux no, it can. It can. It can actually. But uh, I do not know the process how to bypass this uh, thing. Uh, in, on Windows, I know that uh, if you do not have a license, you get a trial thing. Okay. Oh, okay. 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 It is actually a licensed product. I know. Yeah. So I'll have to yeah, find out. I haven't. Yeah, on Linux. Yeah. I, yeah. I on Linux I haven't used. Uh, I do not know. Uh, also, I do not have used a license. Oh, uh, sorry. This trial version on Linux. On Windows, okay. I know mm -hmm. how to uh, get a like uh, trial version and uh, you know do it. Mm -hmm. I know no work around. That that's why. But it is not that you know. Cobol compilation works on Linux also. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Mm -hmm. In our case, you know, we are training, so we cannot have a license. Uh -huh. Yeah, right. I got it. Mm -hmm. So these are the basic topics. Okay. Main mm -hmm. is uh, troubleshooting and tuning and implementation. One thing which is not written over here is one topic. Uh, uh, I think I'm missing one topic which I have not mentioned here. Uh, it is uh, uh, installing and configuring PIA admin review web server troubleshooting. Okay, yeah. Database refresh. Okay. So yeah. we'll add that also. Database refresh. Yeah. So basically, uh, it is pre-database refresh and post-database refresh steps, which okay. you have to perform. Because yeah, I think okay. uh, there must be Oracle DBS uh, performing all the DB tasks. In your company, correct? Uh, we are using a SQL server, so um, yeah, no. Uh, the, the refresh, the refresh. They just do the refresh, and uh, I don't know what they do before the refresh because I have uh, got into this recently. Uh, uh, but after that, there is a script actually. I have. Uh, I need to run it manually. I don't like it. Like it either. <laughs> like I just wanted to mm. implement some kind of automation there also. Um, in the SQL mm. server, so uh, that uh, something uh, we need to come up with. Uh, I need to come up with actually. Um, in respect to, to, I think I know. Um, I don't know whether if I can run uh, SQL, I can invoke the data data mover commands from SQL server uh, batch job or something after the script. Um, yeah, you can invoke it from, from if you is, is command line if you asking that if you can uh, invoke a data mover from command line yes you can but command line okay uh, is it can i include that command line command in the uh, sq in the sql database uh, script sql script like i'm uh, mm -hmm. running a series of uh, after as both post refresh actually I'm running series series of uh, SQLs uh, to update um, all the gateway URLs and uh, all the uh, process scheduler update all the process scheduler um, schedule. Which and schema? Stuff. Sorry. Which schema do you use? Which schema? Do you use Sysadm or do you have some other schema? Whatever. For that, actually, we have a system account. Uh, that, that's the CDM only, I think. Uh, I'm not sure on okay. the what database. Is, mm -hmm. What you can do is, is you can create a SQL, okay, and then again you can uh, create a script, include that SQL, and the second once uh, that uh, you know uh, once that SQL is completed, the second thing is that you can add this command in that particular script. Oh, so okay. you cannot. Okay, so you can create a shell script and mm -hmm. you just run a shell script. It will invoke SQL first. 
once the SQL run is completed, then it will uh, invoke your uh, data mover. This way you can do it. So a single so script will. You are talking about in the Unix shell script means. Yes, correct. Uh, but we use only all the Windows servers. Okay. So. Okay, you have it. So there, 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 uh, there is a batch script. Yeah, batch. Work. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I'll show you on Linux actually. Mm -hmm. Okay, then mm -hmm. batch is actually pretty easy once you understand the Linux one, mm -hmm. and you can schedule it also. Suppose uh, right, right. you can schedule it that uh, the post refresh activities happen every month of, of you know on particular date at particular time. Mm -hmm. So you can schedule it also that automatically. Post, post refresh should be kicked off uh, immediately after uh, the refresh is done. I'm not sure actually how. We have automated one of the environment to kick off the refresh uh, autom automatically every weekend that it was scheduled. I just wanted to look at the job and in include this post refresh step also in, in that. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, um, we can discuss that also. Uh, yeah. So yeah. any tips, uh, tips, and uh, this uh, would be appreciate. I would appreciate that um, around that. Okay. So so. Um, so, Shinovas, uh, what is your preferred timing for like training? So, how many uh, hours we said for this uh, this thing? Uh, uh, generally, a new a new guy who does does not have any like experience and any knowledge about PeopleSoft takes about uh, thirty hours. Okay. okay. Thirty to thirty-two hours actually. So mm -hmm. we do not have, take count, but generally. You know, if he is not getting things in 32 hours, we extend it, and sometimes it goes up to 40 hours also. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Unless a candidate understands fully, so mm -hmm. we cannot say that okay, the time limit for this topic is one hour only, and so you know, it goes up to it depends upon the understanding. But uh, okay. for you, I think uh, we can cover everything in within 25 hours or something, 20 to 25 hours, I think. Because you already have exposure, you will be grasping things more quickly than some other guy. But yeah, one more thing, actually, um, uh, what extent I uh, the logs that are written, uh, uh, written um, are like uh, web logic logs and uh, and text logs and stuff to understand that mm -hmm. uh, all of those uh, issues and pointing out the exact issue. So do I need to, uh, mm, this training will help me in those tux logs and uh, web logic logs and uh, understanding yes. those logs. Yes, so see, do you see this? Mm -hmm. This topic. Right. The highlighted one. Right. So yeah, yeah. it will include everything that you know uh, respective to application server so application server is running on tuxedo only okay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it will include everything that where is the cache is stored where logs are stored and uh, right. okay and similarly for web server web logic what are the different logs meant and uh, the, what are the uh, different log what is the location mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, are, what is the location and when to clear the cache or when to find when to visit on which type of error what log should be seen okay 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 that, yeah that yeah yeah okay. so do we need to have some network uh... hmm? sorry uh do we need to have uh, some uh, background of ne networking also actually some Nothing. Like, nothing. Okay. Nothing. 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 So, so if in case actually, uh, if there are any issues with the network or this thing, um, that is not headache, that is a headache of uh, your uh, the yeah. basic things. I will tell you. I know that you know, I know, that, we don't... I know that we need not to troubleshoot, but at least to um, hmm. point them towards them. Actually, <laughs> making them <laughs> responsible for that issue. So exactly. that, that yes yes so that basic things like how to find the trace route and how to ping this i mean ping the server find the trace route 
and uh, you know send it to the what, what we what are the details we send to the network team that i will tell you okay okay got it uh, but you do not you do not require a network yeah. skills and everything you just require but, uh, no i know uh, we don't need mm, i know we, know we don't need but we need to uh, understand it is a network issue when it uh, when there is an issue so at least mm -hmm. that uh, mm -hmm. that kind of uh, knowledge actually uh, so for that you know the simple there are two three steps simple you know you ping the servers individual mm -hmm. servers you suppose mm -hmm. you know see the flow goes in this way this mm -hmm. is your browser this is one someone sitting on his computer right. and hitting he or she is hitting a http port okay mm -hmm. now this is suppose you are sitting in company with a lan mm -hmm. plugged in your laptop okay mm -hmm. And you are hitting the URL of the right. mm -hmm. Takes you the it takes the request to the web server. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, one day, what is happening? That uh, user says that I'm not able to when I hit the URL. What is happening? That mm -hmm. uh, a user sitting in Singapore says that when he, mm -hmm. he is trying to hit the URL, it is showing the blank page. Okay. Right, and you are setting US, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, what you will do is you will try first thing. What you will do is you will try to log in from your system, and you are able to log in fine. So the okay. first troubleshooting is that you know you will ping from his CMD. You will ping the IPs of the mm -hmm. web servers, okay. and if the ping is not successful, then suddenly you know that within an instance you know that this is a network issue. Because mm -hmm. a user sitting in Singapore is not able to log in, but you, other users are able to log in, which are sitting in other other uh, regions. Mm -hmm. So th these are the simple things. Then what you do? You invoke the uh, network team of Singapore, okay, Singapore mm -hmm. office, and then mm -hmm. then they will come in place, and then they give you instructions only that okay, provide me the trace routes or something else, something like these things. Okay. Mm -hmm. Second scenario is that. You are able to log in into this. Uh, you getting a web page, but web page, yes, yes, mm -hmm. you are getting the web page, but you are not uh, able to log in. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's getting round and round and round, and your user ID, password, and everything is correct, but it is not able to. It shows that application server is down, but in actually your application server is up. Right. Now so what do you do? So you know, uh, you know that uh, your application server is up and running, and everything is working fine. So then, what you can do is you can go on the web servers and ping your application server IPs. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. find out the trace mm -hmm. route that where the network is dropping, and then you can send those details to the network team. See, I'm trying to uh, no, this is a trace route, and see here uh, the other uh, network is dropping within mm -hmm. uh, these, and I am facing issue. Then they'll fix it. So these are the small small things. You just need to uh, know. Two three commands to find the trace route, to ping the server, and the basic right. things. You know, one or two basic things, then you'll have an idea mm -hmm. about this. First thing first is if you ping the server and server ping is fine, then it's your issue actually. Right. Okay. If mm -hmm. the network is not dropping, then it is your issue. So this is how you know. You know. Right. Now see, if the page is not coming up at all. Then you know it that you know this is something there is something wrong with web logic only. Mm -hmm. You 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 will not go straight away to the application server logs. You will first right. go to the web server. You right. first check the web server. There are commands you will check that whether your web server is up or not, and what was the last time your web server was started. Okay. Mm -hmm. So how to find those details? You know how to see the date time stamp that when was a uh, web server started, and mm -hmm. these other things will cover in this troubleshooting part and everything. So I, I forgot actually. Uh, uh, the list actually uh, I do see it doesn't include that integration gateway and integration setup. No setting up the nodes and stuff, right? Um, uh, are we going to discuss Which? integration integration gateway setup? Uh, I be yeah. Yeah, so IG, so okay, do not worry about that. That you know, 
रिपोर्ट नोट कंफिग्रेशन एंड दिस विल कवर एवरीथिंग इवन इफ इट इज नॉट देयर ए टू जेड विल कवर एवरीथिंग डू नॉट वरी अबाउट दैट दिस इज अ शॉर्ट थिंग विच आई क्रिएटेड सो रिपोर्ट नोट कंफिग्रेशन Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. When level of fresh environment is being delivered to you, or you create a fresh environment, what are the basic setups you do? Will cover mm-hmm. everything about that. That is uh, setting up the integration gateway, report node configuration, node configuration, mm-hmm. and then for the process scheduler, adding server to the adding servers to the process scheduler. Okay, mm-hmm. and okay. running a sample processes of the process scheduler, everything, and uh, user security. Okay, mm-hmm. and uh, configuring the target service locations for the SOAP and REST. These three configurations will cover. Do not worry about okay. it. Even if it is not written there, mm-hmm. that is fine. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah, just wanted to check. Yeah, yeah well, well, those are very basic and simple things. Once and also, you know, see, I'll I'll show you. So I have these documents with me. Okay. Mm-hmm. and there are lot lots of them this is just a simple few documents there are lot of them so okay. i've show you one document so see this mm-hmm. is document how to create and configure a application server domain step by step with doc, uh, with uh, you know screenshots okay got it mm-hmm. so these type of documents i'll provide you now okay. let me just to see these are the documents Oh, okay. So for every step, I have mm-hmm. a document. Okay. Suppose you know, I'll, mm-hmm. I'll show you. So these are the because I provide trainings on a regular basis. So I, uh, you know, these are the prepared documents I keep with. Right. You see. Yeah. Since you are familiar with the uh, project migration, that's why I have opened the project migration mm-hmm. document. Right. So that you can right. see what are the. To the very basic level, I uh, created document. That is step one: login into the source DB. Mm-hmm. Then open the project and take free compare codes. Mm-hmm. You know how to even uh, on which folder you should save the pre compare. It is mentioned over there. Okay. So these mm-hmm. kind of documents. Are, okay. Yeah. Let me show you. Uh, you are asking about that uh, IB and Node configuration, right? Right. Since they are. Lot of documents, so I'll have to search. Okay, so see integration broker, how to do right. that? What are the navigation? So these kind of documents I'll provide you. Okay, yeah, thank you. Okay. So with with every uh, every topic, you know mm-hmm. there is a document. Now let me show you a few more. I have a lot of data about that, you know. So. Okay, these are the slides. Mm-hmm. If there is not, uh, if there is uh, no document, then there should there would be a slide provided to you. How to create okay. a report node? What is the what is the use? What is the purpose? Okay, mm-hmm. see how to mm-hmm. screenshot is there. The navigation is screenshot is there. Okay, right. and what what it is to fill up. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let me show you more. Tuning of application server domain. What are the mm-hmm. cases and everything? So there are a lot of <clears throat> documents, you know, cover each and every topic. Okay. Right. Also, I'll show you a few more things. Where it is? so this is something which you can refer for interview purposes also what is the file server what is database server what is batch server okay web server reporting server tuxedo wsl wss processes jolt 2 tier 3 tier and 4 tier design what is jolt okay resolution okay. of report not not posting issue mm-hmm. So we'll cover each and everything, and the details, detailed document will be provided to you with each topic. Okay. Okay. So okay. even if mm-hmm. it is not mentioned over there, mm-hmm. uh, I go step by step, you know, and there will be 
we will cover everything actually okay yep okay thank you nice talking to thank you thank you bye bye